Hello, thank you for joining us today. This is Merlin Gonzalez with Faith, Hope, and Love Community. Faith, Hope, and Love Community, uh, you probably heard about it, but we started back in 2005. Yes, it seems like just like yesterday, and uh, we are here celebrating the 15th FHL Week 2019. And the theme for this year is Hunger Awareness. That will be from July 20 to 27, 2019. You may have heard about uh, our tag phrase before, mission trip in your own backyard. That's how we got started. And then in the past five years, we have now focused on missional food pantry. So as you can see, the vision is still the same. Missional mission right here in our own backyard. And we're so glad to have you here. I just want to take a minute and share with you the different events that is happening during Hunger Awareness Week. We know that in order for us to change, we need to be aware of where we are. In order for us to go where we want to go, we want to see where the starting point is. And that's why we want Indianapolis to understand that hunger is for real in Indianapolis. One out of nine in the United States uh, are hungry. That's about 42 million people. Can you imagine that? 42 million in the greatest country in the world. Now it's worse in the Hoosier land, which is one out of six, or about 910,000 people. Think about 910,000 people in just one state, our state. Actually, Indianapolis was labeled as one of the largest food deserts in the nation. Do you know that? That's why we're, we're trying to put together this hunger awareness. People need to know that in the land of plenty, it's also a land of waste, and out of that, the casualties are the people who are hungry, millions of people all over the United States. Now, here's uh, about another statistics, which is startling for us. Clemson University did a study, and what they found out it was that every 1% increase in food insecurity leads to 12% increase in violent crime, isolating other uh, uh, effects or other causes of crime. Imagine that. So really, hunger affects not just the hungry people. Hunger affects the entire society because we're dealing about uh, the basic human need, which is food. And when things become desperate, when you take away the basic, a basic human need in, in a certain person's life, desperate thing might happen. And that's why we're dealing more than just food insecurity, but we're dealing for the entire society. And that's why Faith, Open and Love have created a concept called Missional Food Pantry. So let me go back again. Uh, on July 20th, there's a hunger walk that's happening at the canal, uh, starting at the Walnut Street Basin. At 9 o'clock is the registration, and then we're going to go around. It's about 5K. Uh, walk at the canal in Indianapolis on July 20, that's Saturday. Then the following day is directed for the religious organizations, uh, churches, which is prayer walk. Uh, this is a little different. Instead of uh, walking starting from one place and ending in, an, in together in one place, this will be starting in different places in the local churches. So at 3 o'clock, simultaneously, there will be dozens, that's our prayer, there will be dozens of churches who will be walking around uh, in their own neighborhood, interceding to God to alleviate hunger and to bring uh, the, the culture of heaven in their own community simultaneously uh, in different places. So that's the prayer walk. And then we do have the hunger challenge. We call it 001 challenge. That's because... Uh, a person will be eating um, no breakfast, no lunch, and then a dinner. This is really how to experience being hungry. And we know that hunger is beyond the growling stomach. When you feel hungry, I don't know about you, but once I, I feel hungry, I, I feel like I'm shaky, don't talk to me, all I think is about food, and uh, can you imagine the effect of that? If you're hungry, you go to, a, um, uh, to work, and you're grumpy, and say, for example, you're driving heavy machinery, and something happened, I mean, that, that, that could cost not just 
profitability of businesses, economy of the entire uh, state, but also the, the people who are affected by hunger. So uh, we will be doing that from Monday through Friday, July 22 to 26. And we will also be walking from one food pantry to another. A group of uh, us will be walking from one food pantry to another. And then lastly, Hunger Awareness Community Gathering at 1100 West 42nd Street parking lot. That's at Interchurch. And this one is uh, dedicated for the neighborhood. There will be a uh, former Colts player who's going to be playing with kids. We will have food trucks. We will have garage sale. And again, it's intended to bring more awareness as far as what's happening in our own community, Hunger Awareness Week, which is July 20 to 27. I would like to uh, introduce Minister Leah Davis. I am the Mission of Food Pantry Director for Faith, Hope, and Love community, and I'm also um, the Missions Outreach and Discipleship Minister at Barnes United Methodist Church. Our Mission of Food Pantry there is the You Feed Them Mission of Food Pantry. So You Feed Them Mission of Food Pantry, how'd you come up with that? Well, based on scripture, uh, Matthew 14, 15, 16, when Jesus told the disciples that uh, when the disciples wanted Jesus to send the crowd away because they were hungry, let them go buy food, mm -hmm. Jesus told the disciples, no, you feed them. And basically, that's where I got the um, inspiration. The Lord gave me that for our missional pantry and that we have the resources to feed the people ourselves. A lot don't have the resources, especially economically, to be able to go and buy groceries. And also in our community, we don't have um, a grocery store for them to get to um, if, uh, easier, easy enough for them. So, so uh, you said about community and neighborhood. Tell us what zip code is that? What's the neighborhood look like? And what is the role of Missional Food Pantry in that neighborhood? Well, Merlin, our zip code is 46208. It's considered the um, United Northwest area of Indianapolis. And in that community, um, there is, is considered one of the highest rated food deserts, food insecure, economically insecure um, deserts in the community. What it looks like is that we, we don't just address physical needs. We feed spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical food. So missionally, what that means is that we offer more wraparound services. We try to find out, yes, you need physical food, but also what can we do to better help you make a transformation in your life? How can we help improve your life? And that means sitting down and finding out what is your, where are you at spiritually? Because after all, we are a church. Where are you spiritually? Where are you um, emotionally? What other needs do you have so that we can come alongside and refer you out and b build community partnership with community resources that we can offer to help you improve your life in the community or in, in, in your family lives? Um, so you said about uh, missional uh, food pantry. So what is the impact that you have seen because you've been open for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And what is the difference with this kind of food pantry and what is the impact that you're seeing? Okay, so there is a difference between our mission of food pantries and our your traditional food pantries in that we focus on building relationships. The primary key in order to be able to help sustain um, the impact into other people's lives is the relationship piece. So if I don't have a relationship with you and I don't trust you that well, then I'm not going to share what my greater needs are beyond just food. What is my deeper hunger? What is it that I need? Is it a job? Is it, are you in an abusive situation? Do you need a home? A lot of our clients are homeless. Um, what are those needs? So we focus on relationships. Our clients, our guests, they never see the actual pantry, the fulfillment center. They don't see the food. We don't distract them with the food. However, they get to leave with eight, nine, ten bags of groceries. What we focus on is sitting down with you and developing that relationship. And we foster that throughout the entire month, which is why we're only open, which is why we're only open once a month. So I'd like to get back to that a little mm -hmm. later uh, regarding the relationship, how you build relationship in the context of food pantry mm -hmm. and also as the uh, food 
um, missional food pantry director for Faith, Hope, and Love, and you teach food pantries uh, mm -hmm. how to do that, how to become relational, and wraparound services, and the impact. So we'll, we'll, we'll go back to that, but I'd like to reintroduce uh, Chaplain Sean Israel. So tell us um, your, your mission and also your mission field. Yes, um, I am a spiritual director over the Indy Vineyard Missional Food Pantry, and we are located, our zip code is 46250. We're located in the northeast side of Indianapolis in the Castleton area. Um, not only do we have a food pantry that meets on the third Tuesday of every month from 630 to 8, uh, we also have a home group that we've established with the people that are coming to the food pantry. Um, they also uh, come for Bible study. We have an adult group that we hold, and we also have a children's group. And in those Bible studies, we are, we're able to build uh, relationships and also teach about the fundamentals of living in Christ. With our adult and children Bible studies, what we're doing is we're building uh, we're building relationships and we're also encouraging growth in Christ. And with our pantry and with our Bible study group, it's more of a community. Um, we're doing, we've been invited uh, and have attended uh, 15th birthday parties, which uh, we have a we have a significant Hispanic uh, population uh, with our pantry, and so um, it's more like a family. We've uh, attended uh, birthday parties, and um, we we had the children attend VBS at our church uh, last week, and it was it was it was awesome. We had kids getting healed and also um, confessing uh, Jesus as Lord. So uh, it's been. Pretty, pretty exciting to see all the growth um, that we have in our pantry. So uh, that is incredible. You said 15 birthday parties? Yes. So how do you build this kind of communities in a context of food pantry as yes, being a missional, in the vineyard, missional food pantry? Well, what we started out, of course, with the individuals coming on the, the food pantry, and we were getting to know them, um, coming regularly and praying for them for new jobs and health and um, and so what's happened from that is they were more encouraged to come to the Bible studies and uh, that we were doing once a month also and it's in those times um, that we're able to get to know them more intimately and uh, grow as a I mean it's more of a family more of a family than just a, a pantry recipient and guests we're, we're we're growing and even our team uh, we pray for one another we lift one another up there and it's like we're uh, we're coming together sure we're helping the community but we're also we're part of the community so Minister Lydia you are you also have another role with Faith Hope and Love Community and tell us about that and what's your, what's your role, what's your title, and also uh, how do you do, do that and um, as far as training and being in the community? Well, I am the Missional Food Pantry Director for Faith, Hope, and Love, and I am one of the instructors and teachers. We help teach, we help launch, we help train new missional food pantries or relaunch missional food pantries. I go out to the churches, I build relationships with the, with the volunteers, as well as with the pastors, and I go in and I train. I, I teach the fundamentic, fundamental and the practical parts of, um, as we call the nuts and bolts of the missional food pantry, from the, from the standing out in line of the clients to their interests and the entire flow of how the missional food pantry um, should function, work. I deal with the licensing and the shelving and everything that's required to actually launch the churches and then follow up I follow up and come alongside each of the missional food pantries after we've launched them um, so it's been such a re reward to get to learn and develop relationships with other churches and their congregations and get to know their community and their guests so um, you you your food pantry actually was a relaunch mm -hmm. and recently faith open love community is uh, relaunching actually this week Yes. Uh, relaunching another food pantry. How do you see the difference on that? What is the culture that you're trying to, to bring once you are talking about the nuts and bolts and, and the operations? 
One thing, especially in a relaunch of a pantry, you have to change the mindset of just serving the traditional pantry, serving the physical food. So you have to train to come alongside the volunteers and the leaders to get them to think more missionally. So um, the goal is to hopefully have them focus on what is it that Jesus has actually called us to do, to not just provide physical food, but how do we get the mindset that everyone is a disciple? Everyone must go out and, and nurture and come alongside the clients that are coming in. They're coming in for physical food, not realizing that they have a deeper hunger for more spiritual food. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so talking about spiritual food, um, Chaplain uh, Sean, so tell us a, maybe a story or two about the families that, that you're visiting, 15 uh, birthday parties, and, and you're, you said building a team, that they are more than just <coughs> volunteers. Tell us uh, maybe a story or two about okay, that. Okay, well, as, as I said, we're building a team, and we are coming together to serve. Um, we had one instance last month, we were kind of, uh, we were low on uh, volunteers. And so we had a couple of, a mother and daughter team, part of our home group as well, um, that came together and they said they wanted to help us uh, meet that need. And so they sat and prayed uh, with our pantry guests and, and did what we do for them, uh, went, went through that and we're really blessed by it. And so it's like they're, they're more or less taking part of, of serving. So that's one example. Uh, we have um, the kids that when we get together, we have a missional um, outreach. So we had a group going uh, to, um, I'm trying to think, uh, it was Honduras. Uh, we had a group going to Honduras. And so we uh, wrote and, and sat with the kids and prayed and asked God to, what can we say and do to encourage them? Um, these kids in Honduras and so they were able to write letters during our Bible time and it's 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 a community I mean it's we're we're looking at the world not just not just here locally wow so. that is that is very innovative <laughs> and I bet the children were really excited in writing letters across the world yes they were really blessed by it yeah Minister Lydia your um, food pantry uh, at Barnes United Methodist, uh, you started a, a culture of baptizing people at the food pantry. Can you tell us about that? Yes, um, we, I had felt that, you know, while our clients are there now, while we're building a relationship, we're basically bringing together a community as a church. And so what things that does not happen on Sundays is that in the last year, we've had over 300 salvations. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Over 300 salvations? Yes, since we've launched our mission of food pantry. We've in had a food over, pantry. In a food pantry. That doesn't happen on a Sunday, Sunday, Sunday service. But also during that, I felt that if you could go to the hospital and someone uh, accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior, and they want to be baptized, you do not get them out of their hospital bed to try to go find a body of water to baptize them. So we started baptizing during our missional food pantry. And praise God, we've had for baptism in the, since we've launched 13 baptisms in the, front, in, the, wow. in the midst of their peers, in the midst of the food pantry. And as a result, there were some that actually said, well, what, what are they doing? And so there's been one or two that learned about what baptism was, asked about it, and then they were also baptized right then. And we, our mayor came to our first year anniversary, and he actually was there to witness three of the baptisms. That is amazing. So we have salvations. We have baptisms. We have team building. We, are, we have building communities, birthday yes. parties, and things. Wow, so this is more than just missional, uh, m more than just a food pantry. This is really missional. So I, I thank both of you for, for being with us today. And what a blessing to hear those stories. I know that you have a lot more stories, uh, but uh, hopefully, Lord willing, we may do another story uh, regarding what's happening in the missional food pantry in Indianapolis, and hopefully in beyond. Minister Lydia, could you uh, tell us um, one more thing about your missional food pantry? 
Yes, Merlin. Our Mission of Food Pantry is every third Thursday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And then we also, Merlin, you know, we have a feeding ministry that's also on Sundays from 1 to 2 and on Wednesdays from 5 to 6. That's awesome. And Sean, when is your food pantry? Okay. Um, our food pantry is the third uh, Tuesday of every month from 6.30 to 8. We also have a our home group meet, our pantry Bible study. That is on the second Tuesday of every uh, month, and that is from 6.45 uh, to 8 o'clock. Excellent. So in our next segment, we will have two other guests. That's Minister Donna and... Missional Food Pantry Director Kim. We'll be right back. Here with me is Minister Donna Cherry. So tell us about what you do with Faith, Hope, and Love and also uh, your recent experience as far as dealing and teaching churches about Missional Food Pantry. Okay, thank you. Um, I really enjoy training the churches for the missional food pantries to prepare the ministry teams to minister to the recipients that come off the streets they are so hungry people are so hungry and i'm just delighted to see that people are just excited to be able to minister and the, and the recipients are definitely responding because we see a lot of people saved and healed and uh, receiving a lot from the Lord. So uh, you talk about uh, your, your main job is to train food pantries how to be able to uh, share the gospel, pray for people. Now, I don't, I don't know about you out there, but I talk to a lot of pastors. I meet a lot of pastors. I work with a lot of pastors. And when I tell them about uh, this is Mission of Food Pantry, we pray for people, and many of them, majority of them will say, that's not going to happen in our food pantry. So with that in mind, how, how do you train and, and what's the, the, the culture shift that, that you do in order for um, the, the public or the uh, food insecure to receive prayer? Because, you know, you tell us also as far as the percentage of who receive prayer in a food pantry. When we come off the, they come off the streets, the recipients come off the streets, they are given a form for their food and it is sent right away to the area that will put the food together so while the, we are waiting for that they already know that they are going to receive food so they know that the, the next time that they come to our table they are to open to receive ministry so at first they don't know that they're going to receive ministry um, and we offer it to them we don't make them receive but we're developing relationship with them because our number one thing is we want them to know the love of god and we want to share the love of god with them so and when they're first uh, recipients then we do a survey with them and we do a survey and i've taught all the teams how to lead them to the lord through this survey and so it will identify their receptivity to the gospel. And if they are ready, because the Bible says that, that the harvest is ready and it is white and ready to, to come into the Lord to receive Christ. So after we do that survey, we find out right away where their spiritual condition is. And many times we lead them to the Lord. And many times, there's very few times that they do not want to receive prayer and receive a touch from the Lord. And then we disciple them. We have a discipleship book that we can further disciple them every time that they come back to the food pantries. They receive more of the love of God. They re develop relationships with each other and they are sent off and then we will follow up after afterwards. Wow, yeah, so you have survey, you share uh, the gospel, you disciple. So in the context of missional food pantry, you have discipleship, you have outreach, which is giving away food, and then the other pillar is also uh, evangelism. So again, in, in, in the food pantry, a church can have and evangelize 
and empower and disciple people and at the same time reach out to the greater uh, community. So how does that work for you, uh, Kim? You're the uh, Missional Food Pantry Director at the Father's Table. Tell us about um, your team. I know that you were a, um, a, a relaunch. Tell us first about what happened uh, in that transition. Okay, so we did have a traditional food pantry for a couple of years, and we were dwindling in volunteers. We were going to probably have to either shut the food pantry or um, take a different route. And the Lord put it on my mind because of my relationship with Donna, who I've known for 22 years. And I had met Merlin in the past at different um, prayer initiatives. And so I call, I asked Pastor, I said, can I call Merlin Gonzalez and just find out what kind of training that we can get to train our Mission, our food pantry volunteers to do more for the people who come in who want food. And that's what happened. Um, the, Lord, the Lord just really just opened up one door after another to provide us more training, um, more resources, and now we just have a whole new culture in our church um, because of finding our place, each person being able to use the gifts that God's given them. And that's what was really exciting about our um, new missional food pantry, whether your gifting is in prayer and evangelism, or perhaps you're just a friendly person with a smile. Um, maybe you're a behind the scenes person who really just likes bagging the groceries. And so that was really exciting for us is to have probably in a congregation of about maybe 75 people, we have 40 or more volunteers each time our food pantry is open. That is amazing. So now you're talking about really um, bringing different culture and, and bringing uh, a fresh of breath air in, in the congregation with the missional food pantry. So now we're talking about more than just giving away food, more than just uh, evangelism, discipleship, outreach, but also changing the culture in, in the church. So how does that work? How does that look like in uh, your, your, your church? When people come to the food pantry, they will see families working together. And we have a lot of children um, who come along with their parents to volunteer. Um, my nephew, who's only six years old, will come and work in the fulfillment center bagging groceries, and he is so excited to be able to do that. We also have in the Fresh and Frozen area, we'll have a volunteer, and he'll have a couple of um, children working with him. And so we really are having mentorship within our body to teach the younger children how to minister and, and serve in the community. Wow, that is uh, amazing. So, uh, Donna, you are the... Um prayer director and you teach uh, how congregation or the uh, missional food pantry volunteers reach out to uh, the, um, the public. So what does it mean for you to see the transformation that happens from the volunteers point of view and also the transformation that happened when this volunteer after you train them they become bold and as you mentioned earlier, uh, lead people to the Lord. Merlin, I think that's one of the most exciting things about this model, which I don't believe that there's another model like this in the United States that we have found. Um, with this model, the people really would love to receive uh, ministry, but as we train the churches and the volunteers, they do become bolder. They start out really hesitant. They start out fearful, but we do hands-on training to at our uh, model uh, food pantries where we can do hands-on training where they can minister alongside with another minister, and I do a whole day of training. So they are really given the tools that they need to be the best minister of the gospel. And so they're very excited. I mean, I, I think one of the most exciting times that I've seen is like the older um, uh, churches that are the, uh, those, the ministers, when they minister the gospel, that hasn't ever ministered to anyone or seen anyone come to the Lord. 
they are given the tools and to see them birth that out and see them be confident and see them love sharing the love of God and seeing the recipients receive that love back, that God loves them. He has a great plan for their life. He has a great future. The recipients are just so open and they're just so ready to receive whatever church Whatever church we have ever trained, I have never seen anyone deny the love of God. So you're saying that, um, and, and I know I'm involved with that, uh, Missional Food Pantry, and, and we've seen uh, United Methodists, Charismatics, Baptists, uh, all kinds of denominations, as what Donna mentioned. Uh, it doesn't, it cross denominational lines, and the results is the same. Uh, so with Missional Food Pantry, it's more than just an event. That's what Donna was talking about. She's talking about a change of culture, change of mindset, and change of a lifestyle. I think a lot of times we talk about, hey, you know, let's go on a mission. And that becomes an event, and then it stopped there. So it becomes a lifestyle. So, Kim, uh, you, you've been operating in the uh, past two or three months now. So... The lifestyle, have you seen like change of lifestyle of people that this is more than just like a food pantry day, but actually it becomes a lifestyle? Can you say something about that? Yes, I think that it really has set our church on fire to, um, to do this missional food pantry. We have people who will come out. Uh, and come to the church and make phone calls and just call and check on our recipients and see how they're going. And um, we have people um, come out and we have what we call the kids table. And that's a day where we can do a meal together and then we just read God's word. And then that is a time where we can disciple the people who've come to our food pantry. And I think just overall, people are so excited about what God is doing in our midst and um, just amazed at how open to the gospel that our food pantry recipients are. Yeah. You mentioned something there about God doing something in our midst. God is always doing something. And it's up to us to plug in, to really tune in to that culture of heaven and bring that reality right here on earth. And that's what faith, hope, and love is all about. So we're about uh, finishing our segment here. But uh, Donna, would you like to uh, say something uh, before we end the program? Yes, Merlin, I just want to say a quick testimony of one of the fellows that came in off the streets. It was awesome. Um, he came off the streets, and he saw, as Minister Lydia says, that they do baptisms. He saw someone getting baptized, and he wanted to get baptized right away. And what we found out was that he actually had people that was going after him, trying to shoot him, trying to kill him. And so he wanted to get as close as he could to the Lord. And so he was, he is one of our most favorite recipients. We've developed relationships with him. He received the Lord. He got, he got baptized that day. We saw transformation take place. And he just recently told me that they are no longer trying to destroy him and kill his life. And so we're seeing a great transformation take place of those that come off the streets. Just one initial little five minute, 10 minutes minute talk with them changed his life he received everything we had to give him that day yeah you mentioned something there donna that it's more than just uh output which is most of the time we measure a success by how many people we serve and how much food we give but in the missional concept it's the outcome which is more as what you mentioned transformation so uh kim any uh, last words from you i know you have uh, one or two great stories also. I was just thinking of a story about a man who um, came over on his lunch break from work and he said, can I just get some groceries real fast? And so um, Minister Donna was uh, working at our food pantry that night and she said, I can minister to him. And so she gave him the gospel and he just received and he ended up coming back to church um, on Sunday and got prayed for for a cough. And so it's just really exciting to see um, people's lives changed. 
That's amazing. So again, uh, we're, we're close to an end now in our segment. So this is Merlin Gonzalez with Faith, Hope, and Love. For more information, you can visit our website at fhlcommunity.org. And also, I'd like to uh, remind you about the 15th year anniversary of FHL Week, which is July 20 to 27. And the theme is Hunger Awareness. All of us have a part to play in alleviating hunger in our community. And the official website for Hunger Awareness is fhlinternational.info. You can call us also at 317-572-5793. Or you can email me directly at Merlin, M-E-R-L-I-N, at FHLinternational.org. God bless you.